Right before the COVID lockdown in 2020, my family caught a little black and white kitten who had been living under our deck. His mom had brought him to us a few months before and we'd been feeding them both every morning. Once we got him inside, we found out that he was extremely scared of us and wouldn't let us touch him. Over the course of the next few months, we could see that he really wanted to interact with us, but he was too nervous. However, once we got him fixed, we noticed an immediate difference in his attitude. He was suddenly begging to be pet. Within a matter of weeks, he was so comfortable that he had become a lap cat and would insist on having lap time multiple times a day. We had gone through several names for him, including Mickey and Snoopy, but none of those seemed to really fit him. After seeing how much he loved to cuddle and be held like a baby after he got fixed, we decided to call him the only name that seemed to encompass his personality, which was Baby. Baby adored our other male cat, Peach, who sadly passed away this past June. They would chase each other and wrestle all the time. Unfortunately, our other male cat, Jarvis, was not as excited with the newest edition. Baby found Jarvis fascinating, and he would do everything he could to get his attention. At first, Jarvis would chase Baby out of the living room and back over the baby gate we had up. But we noticed that the chasing became less aggressive and more playful as time went on. As happy as Baby was with his new family, he still missed his mom. Every time she came to our house for food, Baby would cry and paw the window. We wanted to rescue her too, but we didn't want to leave any kittens she might have without a mother. Finally, about a year and a half later, we saw our opportunity when she brought her new kitten to our house to be fed. Are you hungry? Do you want some food? Yeah? Anything, kitten? Is that your little brother or sister? A couple weeks later, we were able to catch them both and we put them in our mudroom. The kitten was about four months old, so we kept him in a big kennel to prevent any pregnancy issues with his mother. Baby wasn't too impressed with his new little brother because he only wanted his mama back, but the new kitten loved him. A couple weeks later, we found out that Baby would end up having a lot more competition for his mama's attention. The night that Hurricane Ida hit us, my mom came running into the living room yelling, Mama Cat just gave birth. We were wondering if she was pregnant, but her belly didn't look very big, so we thought that she wasn't very far along if she was pregnant. We had no clue she was ready to pop. <laughs> She gave birth to three precious little babies. She was the main female cat populated in our neighborhood with kittens, but most of her babies never stayed alive for very long because we have foxes. Mama Cat was so happy to be a mother again. She just cuddled her babies all day and let them walk all over her. We could see that she was so much more at peace, getting her meals fed to her and just getting to spend time with her kittens rather than worrying about protecting them. Even though Mama Cat was still scared of us, her babies were more than ready to find out who we were. There were two boys and one girl. We named them Pongo, Mickey Mouse, and Minnie Mouse. They were fascinated with their older brother who we named Sylvester after the Looney Tunes cat. 
Sylvester adored them, but he played a bit rough, so we had to keep him separated in a kennel when we weren't there. This made him very sad because all he wanted to do was cuddle with his mama and new siblings. Oh. Hello. When Mama Cat first gave birth, we were really excited to see if one of the kittens would have a white tail tip like Baby. We realized that Minnie not only had a tail tip, but was also the spitting image of Baby in every other way too. I think that they both understand that they look alike because we would see them inspecting each other's tail tips sometimes. Minnie was absolutely enthralled with Baby. She would follow him around every time he came to visit the nursery. Baby was still a bit jealous of all the new kittens, so he wasn't as impressed. But little by little, he warmed up to Minnie. He seems to have a special place in his heart for her, and I think he likes having a mini-me around the house. Those first few weeks of watching the kittens grow were amazing. We never raised kittens from birth, so it was a whole new experience. It was wonderful to see them grow up with their mama and their two older brothers. Not many kittens get that experience. Eventually, the kittens got older and more curious and started begging to be let out of the nursery. He would scream at the door and jump up on the window. <laughs> we gave in, of course, and started bringing them into the rest of the house, which is when they really started causing trouble. Every day is an adventure with them. It feels like we're living in a 101 Dalmatians movie. <laughs> Seeing black and white cats in every room you go into is so surreal. <laughs> it's amazing to be constantly surrounded by so many affectionate kitties. They follow us all around, even into the bathroom and shower. They're such a happy little family. Even Baby and Jarvis have warmed up to them. Those first few months, Mama Cat didn't like coming in our main living space very often, so Sylvester took over as the nanny to his younger siblings when she wasn't around. He groomed them and cuddled them and just loved taking care of them. Minnie even started returning the favor and taking care of him. 
Mama Cat still doesn't like being touched by us, but she adores cuddling with her babies all day. Since she's been a feral cat all her life and is probably pretty old, we thought that she might not ever start acting or playing like a normal cat. But lately, we've been catching her act just like one of her kittens. We're okay if she decides to never be very social with us. We're just glad that we're able to rescue her from her hard life outside and let her retire with her five kids around her. Originally, we had planned to adopt Mama Cat, Sylvester, and the three kittens out. My mom even had a poster made up for Sylvester, but my dad and I wouldn't let her put it up. We saw how much they loved each other, and we ultimately decided to keep them and give them the life that most cats don't have. The chance to stay with their mama and siblings forever. We joke that we're the worst fosters in the world because the foster animals never end up leaving our house. <laughs> we also have a dog in addition to these seven cats, so feeding and caring for them has gotten incredibly expensive. We spend a minimum of $700 a month on caring for the cats, which doesn't include the cost of vet bills, vitamin supplements, bedding, or toys. We've had two previous cats pass away from cancer and we never want our new kitties to suffer the same fate. So we do our best to feed them the healthiest food we can without breaking the bank. Unfortunately, the monthly amount we have to spend on them is still extremely expensive and we're not sure we'll be able to keep it up for much longer. But more than anything, we want to keep this little cat family together, but it's becoming tough to make ends meet. If you would like to donate to help us out, you can check out their GoFundMe, which is called Keep a Cat Family Together. And if you would like to see more of our kitties' adventures, you can check out their Instagram page, which is called Black and White Brigade 6, or their YouTube channel, which is called The Black and White Brigade.